Hi, my name is Alex, and in this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to be painting some orcs for my orc tower project. So this video is going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to be painting the entirety of the tower. I'm just going to be focusing on painting a couple of these orcs because I needed to figure out how I was going to paint all of the different orcs that are going to be on this tower that I'm working on. I knew that I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of time working on every single miniature and painting them like I would normally because that would just take way too much time. So I decided to take this video to explore the differences between how you might paint a miniature for an army or for a large project when you have to paint a lot of them and how you would paint a miniature if you're just trying to make one mini look as good as you possibly can. So that's what this video is dedicated to. Here you can see a couple of the guys that we're going to be painting today. And what I wanted to do with this video was kind of show my process as I'm playing around with some different ways of approaching painting. What I'm figuring out with this guy that I'm painting here is how exactly do I want to go about painting miniatures when I know that I'm going to have to get a lot done in a shorter amount of time. And this guy that I'm painting here is my first experiment in that regard. I base coat this guy in Vallejo model colors refractive green. My first thought for painting this guy was going over the entirety of the miniature and add all the base tones. For his boots, I take some Vallejo model color flat brown and yellow ochre, which I generally use for my leather color. And then I also base tone some of the wraps that he has as well as his loincloth with Vallejo model colors buff. To paint the pants, I take the buff color and add that to the flat brown to create a slightly different brown than the leather of the boots. And then taking Vallejo model colors black, I go over and paint his top knot. I also add some more brown for his belt, adding a variation of the same color we added for the boots, mixing the flat brown with the yellow ochre. Since this guy is all about trying to save time, I thought I would go over the entire miniature in a series of different washes. And for this I use Agrax Earthshade Citadel Colors Brown Wash. And once I've added the brown wash everywhere I wanted, I decided that I would add a black wash over top of the skin of the orc. My thought with this would be that I could add a basic layer of highlights and shadows fairly quickly on the orc skin in the same way that I had done for the pants. And then to create some highlights, I would just do a quick little bit of glazing. But unfortunately, a quick little bit of glazing became a bunch of tedious glazing, as if I was just taking my time with this miniature, and wasn't very quick at all. What I realized was that I was trying to add a base layer of contrast with the dark wash, and then just touch up the contrast with the highlights. But the dark wash really didn't add any contrast, it just made the base tone darker. So what I ended up doing was just sitting down and painting out and glazing out all of the highlights that I needed. And that wasn't the point of this miniature. The whole idea was to try and figure out how I could get an acceptable result that had some idea of contrast and highlight and wasn't just base tones, but also that didn't take forever to do so that I could hypothetically do an entire army painting this way. But what I ended up doing was just adding an extra step to how I would have already painted it if I was taking my time with it, which wasn't the point. Finish this miniature up with the highlights using Vallejo model colors refractive green and yellow ochre for the highlights. Slowly begin to glaze on all the highlights that I need. I then do a quick dry brush of a lighter color over top of the leathers and the boots, which gives them a little bit of depth as well as making them look a little bit old. And then I also add some quick highlights onto the loincloth before moving on to the next miniature. So for this next guy, I decided rather than base toning him in the mid-tone refractive green, I add some black into the green and that way I don't actually have to waste my time adding a wash to darken the color, I just add an already darkened color. Then as a quick way to add some dynamics and some contrast to this miniature, I start mixing a little bit more refractive green to the color that I made and start dry brushing that over the entire miniature. And I think I did about two or three layers of this dry brush until I was dry brushing on the straight refractive green. 
And the reason you wouldn't want to do this on a normal miniature that you're trying to take your time with is because this is, a, first of all, a very loose highlight and it can tend to have a slightly granular uh, feel to it and it doesn't look super natural. But when you're painting an entire army, it's less about the individual miniatures and more about the army as a whole. Or in my case, more about the whole model that I'm making as a whole rather than each individual character on it. But even with that said, when I add the even brighter highlights, I don't do a dry brush. I actually do a quick glaze over top of this because I found that if you add a glaze for your brighter highlights, doing maybe one or two of these brighter highlights, it helps cover up some of the more prevalent um, areas that have that granular effect to them. Rather than having a grainy look to the entirety of the miniature, you can have it only kind of show up in some of the darker areas of the gradient. And obviously it isn't a perfect effect for all of your miniatures, but if you're painting a lot of them, it's a good way to get a solid amount of highlights without making it look too weird or, again, grainy. Moving on from the skin of this Gretchen, I add the pants and the belts in the same way that I did for my last mini, because I think that for these specific parts that have a lot of deeper details, like the folds of the pants, it doesn't actually matter as much to go in and doing all of the highlighting like we had done before. Putting just a wash on the pants and the belt it does perfectly well for creating the contrast that you need. I then paint the mouth of this guy, starting by covering the teeth as well as any part where the gums are going to be with a slightly dark red, and then go over and paint all the teeth with an off-white color. And then I also go over that with the brown wash, and this does a very good job of creating shadows as well as darkening the teeth to make them look a little bit grosser and kind of orky. And then to finish this guy off, I add a little bit of red paint for his eyes, and I'm going to wait to do the metallics a little bit later. Then I decided I would paint this main orc guy and take my time with this guy and do it how I would normally paint one of my miniatures in contrast to how I painted the last guy. And again, the main part that I'm focusing on is going to be the skin since that's the most dynamic uh, part of these minis. And I start by again painting the darkest tone over all of the skin of this mini. And then I use some wet blending to get the rest of the highlights in. And this process is similar to the last one, but rather than mixing colors that get progressively lighter and dry brushing them on, I mix those same colors but use primarily wet blending to create the gradients and highlights. And this creates a significantly cleaner and smoother and simply more artistic series of highlights and contrast. Because unlike the dry brush, you can actually decide where the gradients go. The dry brush simply the dry brush simply takes whatever shape that the miniature is and adds more contrast. Whereas this process is more focused on where you want every single shadow and every single highlight to be, which obviously takes significantly more time, but also I would say obviously yields a significantly better result. And as well as using a better result, I find that it's a lot more fun to paint this way. Obviously, if I'm painting a ton of these guys, and obviously if I'm painting each of these guys for an army or for, this, for a larger project like I'm doing, I can't sit down and paint every single miniature like I might want to, because by the time I would get that done, I would just be so sick and tired of the process. But sitting down to paint one miniature and really taking your time to do wet blending and a little bit of glazing here here and there to get the highlights exactly where they need to be is so rewarding and enjoyable. But in the end, it's about trying to figure out how much time can you dedicate to one aspect of a large project. If this is one miniature you're painting, of course you want to take your time with it. But if you're painting a larger project like I am, you don't have time to do every single miniature in the detail that I'm doing this mini. The rest of the process for this miniature is actually fairly similar to the other one. It's not too complicated, since I again spent most of my time working on the face and skin of the orc. I add a light brown onto the fur for his coat, and then go in with a darker brown for all of the leather parts, so like the straps going up his coat, or whatever collar I guess it is, it's not quite a coat as well as his belt. I then paint his loincloth with a little bit of off-white, and then I go over all of those parts of the miniature with a dark brown wash. 
making sure to get all of the leather parts as well as the fur on his on his shoulders. I guess I, maybe you could call it a pelt or something. I then go over that with a dry brush of a lighter yellow, obviously to create a little bit more contrast on that that I needed after I had added the wash. I then do something similar for all of the leathers, adding a kind of rough edge highlighting as well as some little scratch marks with a bright highlight color. I found that this is the best way that I figured out how to do leathers. Combination of the dark wash beforehand and then the rough highlights I think looks really good. I then also paint the mouth of this guy the same way that I had painted the other miniatures, adding a dark red uh, inside the mouth and then I also add a little bit of a highlight onto the pants. Just doing a quick glaze since I don't need there to be a too much saturation in the brown pants. I forgot to film where I added the teeth, but I just go around adding a couple little dots inside the mouth, even though there isn't a tooth indent for where it's supposed to be in the sculpt. And then as you can see me doing, I add a little bit of red for the eye of this mini. And now I go and do the metals for all the miniatures. And this I also keep fairly simple, since it's not a major part of any of these models. I go in and I add a base kind of metallic color as well as a brass color to act as a contrast metallic to add a little bit more interest in some of the mechanical parts like this guy's staff and whatever weird little plaque he's got going on behind his back. And then I go over all of my metals with a wash, going over the silver gray metal with a black wash and going over all of the brass with a brown wash. Since I got all of these colors mixing metallic paint and non-metallic paint, they tend to have a slightly granular glittery effect rather than just a metallic effect, and adding this wash helps mask that a little bit, as well as of course getting into all of the details and bringing them out a little bit more. And once I've gone around and done the metals and the washes for all of the other little guys that I had painted, these guys are ready to get added onto the orc tower once that gets painted. I hope you enjoyed this video, it's a little bit of a different feel for me since most of the videos I make are dedicated to actually working on a large project or sculpting. If you want more videos like this where I just talk about painting with what little knowledge I do know about it, let me know in the comments below. But I hope you enjoyed this video, in the next video in this series I'm going to be painting the rest of the orc tower and finishing that project off. And if you did enjoy this video, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. All this stuff is so helpful for a growing channel. And I'll try to get back to as many comments as I can, seeing as right now I'm actually traveling abroad. And if you're interested in exactly what I'm doing and why that makes it difficult for me to answer comments, uh, go check out the video that I did talking about that that's on the front page of my channel page. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.